We can learn a lot from looking at what others do in Excel, both the good and the not so good. Last week, one of my course members asked me to help them understand what a nested if formula was doing in a file that they'd inherited in their new job. It contained 15 nested if functions, five ceiling functions, and a load of repetition. The person who wrote this formula must have had one hell of a headache when they finished concocting it. So in this video, I'm going to step through the process I take to decipher complex formulas like this. We'll look at the avoidable mistakes they made writing the formula, and I'll show you how to write a simpler formula that doesn't contain any ifs. So you can see the ridiculous if formula here in column I. Let's just copy this formula, Control C to copy it. And then on the insert tab, I'm going to get an add-in called the advanced formula environment. I'm going to add that and click continue. It opens in a pane on the right hand side. I'm just going to drag it out and make it a bit bigger. This lists any defined names I currently have in the file. I'm just going to add a new formula and we'll call it troubleshoot. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And in the refers to, I'm going to control V to paste in the formula I just copied. It's going to go back to the very beginning and delete the equal sign because there's already one there. Clicking on add adds the formula to this list and you can see it here. It's all nicely formatted with line breaks and color coding, making it a lot easier to read. So with it nicely formatted, I'm just going to highlight the formula, control C to copy it and then move that out of the way. And in a new column, I'm just going to paste it in. So in the formula bar, control V to paste and press enter. Let's right mouse click and drag fill without formatting. So there's my formula. You can see it returns the same results as this column. It's simply formatted in a way that makes it a lot easier to read. We can expand the formula bar to see it all there. I'll minimize that again and we'll just look at it in the advanced formula environment because this also has the color coding. Let's make it big enough so we can see as much as possible in the screen. Now I can see the first if formula criteria contains an extra space on the end of consignment. So let's delete that because surely that's an error. So I'll just move that out of the way, go back in and we'll delete consignment there. And let's copy that down again without formatting. So that's fixed that. We can also see there's a lot of repetition. For example, the second if is whether G11 is greater than 30 and we can see that's listed twice. Then there's the interest rate calculation also in there twice. The last set of nested ifs are all identical. And then there are a ton of ceiling functions. Now the ceiling function rounds numbers to the nearest multiple of significance. In this formula, it's rounding up to the nearest 10. Now notice it's rounding twice, once at the if level and again before converting with the foreign exchange rate. Now, given how this formula has been written and because this is a pricing model as opposed to a scientific calculation, I put this down to user error because I doubt the intention is to round it up twice. So I'm going to remove the extra ceiling functions just to reduce the noise a little bit. So let's go into the formula bar. So the safest way to do this is to delete them one at a time. So I'll delete that ceiling opening parentheses and then the comma 10 and the closing parentheses there. Press enter and if your formula enters without an error, then you can go ahead and delete the next one and so on until they're all done. I'll fast forward because I've got one I prepared earlier. So I'll just pop that in. And you can see there's a very small difference. Let's just calculate it 0 0.002 or approximately 0.15%. And I expect that's acceptable given the objective of this formula. Now the next change I'm going to make is to convert this data into an Excel table. So control T to format it in a table. Yes, my table has headers, so I'll click OK. Let's just go ahead and make it no formatting and we'll reduce the size of some of these columns so that it fits into the smaller space a bit easier. And we also don't need the filter buttons. Okay. So now that my data is in a table, instead of using these cell references, which don't have a lot of meaning, I can replace them with the structured reference. So let's just drag this out of the way. And instead of G11, I'm just going to select the cell. 
and instead of C11, we'll select the cell. Now, unfortunately, there's no quick way to replace these. You could use find and replace, but honestly, by the time you make sure you've got all of the square brackets correct and the structured references correct, it's just as quick to manually replace them using the mouse. Now, I've also prepared one of these earlier, so I'm going to fast forward and complete that. So there's my updated formula with the structured references, which instantly makes the formula readable in English. Now, the next thing I want to do is isolate the various criteria so I can see the logic that's being applied. Now, there are three logical tests applicable to all scenarios. The first one is if the nature of delivery is consignment, then we add 20. And we can see that here. There's adding 20 if the nature of delivery is consignment. Next is whether the transport rate is greater than 10. If it is, it adds the transport rate from column F. And the third one is whether the credit days are greater than 30. And if they are, then it adds on this provision for financial charges minus the AGO. Now the AGO is down here. It's the land cost divided by 365 times 30 times the interest rate, which we can see here. Now these conditions apply to all customers. Therefore, there's no need to repeat them in multiple ifs. Instead, we can simply add them on at the end and I'll cover more on that in a moment. Now the last set of repeating ifs are these here. And you can see they're exactly the same all the way down. And they're checking whether the reference station is station A. If it is, then it returns the cost for station A. Otherwise, it returns the cost for station B. And the calculation takes that cost minus the discount plus the transport rate if the transport rate is greater than 10. Otherwise, it just takes the cost minus the discount. If it's not station A, it gets station B's cost. So basically, we need to find the station cost minus the discount for each customer. Now, the author of this formula has used nested ifs to cycle through the different calculations for each station, but a more efficient way is to use a lookup formula to find the value for the reference station and then add the other charges based on the logic I identified earlier. The last thing we do is wrap the function in ceiling, round it up to a multiple of 10 and divide it by the foreign exchange rate. All right, we're ready to look at an easier and more efficient way to write this formula. We know that the question driving the need for all of these nested ifs is whether the station is A or B. So I'm going to use XLOOKUP to do this. If you don't have XLOOKUP, you can use VLOOKUP or INDEX and MAT. So I'm looking up the station in this column and I want to return the cost. If it's not found, I don't need to worry about that. I know it will be found. I want an exact match. That's the default. So I could omit this argument, but we'll leave it in just for completeness. Close parentheses on XLOOKUP. Obviously, if you're using VLOOKUP or index and match, you want an exact match as well. If I just press enter there, you can see it returns the station cost for station A. And then on top of that, I'm going to Alt and Enter just to wrap my formula down onto the next row. I'm going to subtract the discount, Alt and Enter. Let's make the formula bar a bit bigger. Next, I need to apply the logical tests. So we need to add if the nature of delivery equals consignment, then we're going to add 20. Now I'm multiplying by 20, and that's because this is a logical test. It's either going to return true or false. That's F9 to evaluate. It returns true. And when you apply a math operation to true or false, you get their numeric equivalents. The numeric equivalent for true is one and for false it's zero. This is going to result in one times 20, which gives me 20. So control Z to undo that. That's our first logical test. And then I'm going to Alt enter onto the next row. My next logical test, I want to add whether the transport rate is greater than 10. If it is, we're going to add in the transport rate. So I'm multiplying it because this logical test here is either going to return a one or a zero. Alt enter onto the next line. The third one is whether the credit days is greater than 30. If it is, then we need to take the provision for financial charges minus this AGO amount divided by 365 times 30 times the interest rate. 
and that's simply in a named cell called interrate. Close parentheses on the credit charge. Now once I get all of those results, I want to apply the ceiling function. So let's add that in at the start. I'm just going to use this one for consistency, but you should probably use the new ceiling math function. And I'm going to add in a carriage return, comma 10. We want to round it up to a significance of 10. And then we need to divide it all by the exchange rate, which is in this cell here called FX rate. That's my simplified formula. We can put in a carriage return here just for consistency and press enter. Now, not only is my formula much shorter, it's more efficient for Excel to calculate because it's not cycling through loads of if statements, but it's also much easier to decipher. Before I copy it down, let's just absolute reference the reference in the XLOOKUP. And now I can right click and drag fill without formatting. So the takeaways from this lesson are that while some functions can perform the same calculations as others, it doesn't mean they're the best ones to use. It's important to know a range of functions so you can choose the correct one for the task. If you'd like to improve your formula skills, please consider my advanced formulas course. There's a link to it in the video description. Secondly, structure your formula with carriage returns. It makes them much easier to read and write. Format your data in an Excel table. That way you can use the structured references, which makes formulas readable in English. And lastly, you don't always need if to apply a logical test. Now these logical tests could have been written with ifs. For example, I could have said, if the nature of delivery equals consignment, then 20, otherwise zero. It's going to give the same result, just with a few more steps. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.